Hi, welcome back to the Nook. I'm so happy to be back on this channel again. Um, I know I missed an upload last week and that's because things have been really hectic for me <laughs> and I just really didn't have time to read or really think very deeply about things around me. Um, but I did do a live stream and was able to catch some of you then so that was really nice and um, I actually did start a Twitch account um, based of popular demand so if you're looking out for future live streams I will be doing them on Twitch but I am trying to figure out how to also stream on YouTube as well but I'm not too sure how to work that out um, but yes, I did make a Twitch account so you can go and follow it right there below. But today's video is going to be a book haul um, and you know, I haven't done one of these in a long while. Just a disclaimer once again, I don't usually do book hauls simply because I don't buy books as much. Um, once in a while, I might buy a book for myself but I do not want in any way to promote excessive book buying so a lot of the books that I have here are either library copies or they are sort of sent to me uh, for review for honest uh, for honest review um, or they are sent to me by authors who you know just kind of want me to read their books and uh, and just kind of think about them or talk about them and share about them so I'm really really um, super honored to be receiving books directly from authors I never thought I would come to a point where authors kind of willingly reach out to me and ask me if I was interested in reading their books so this is really amazing to me and I'm really grateful for that uh, yeah so let's just start I have three categories of books um, one is sort of Singapore books um, the second category is a sort of climate or environmental uh, books. A lot of them um, in today's list are cli-fi books, so that's kind of very interesting and exciting for me. And the last category is just general fiction, non-fiction, mostly non-fiction, um, but just topics that I've been interested in and am really excited to kind of dip my toes in as well. So yeah, I have a whole bunch of books as well as ebooks, so I'm gonna go bit by bit uh, as much as I can <laughs> without making this video too boring. But first, um, let me just go through the Singapore books. The first book I have here is Singapura Bura, Malay Speculative Fiction from Singapore, edited by Nasri Bawrawi. And um, this is really exciting. This was sent to me by Ethos Books, uh, which is an independent uh, publishing house here in Singapore. And you know, there's so many different um, writers and authors have contributed to this collection uh, and I really enjoyed how it is very much centered upon the, uh, Mal the Malay experience in Singapore. So in Singapore, I would say a lot of the independent publishing is very much dominated by very specific kinds of voices. Um, I don't think this is intentional, but obviously it is a matter of representation and a matter of which voices get to, you know, get to the top most of the time. And that would be sort of the um, mid maybe middle to higher income Chinese male, sometimes female <laughs> sort of writer. Um, that's not necessarily wrong per se, but it is not truly representative of the entire population. And, you know, I'm really glad that, you know, um, as much as there are a lot of Chinese references and a lot of local literature, I really want to see much more of a Malay-centric voice in local literature without necessarily labelling it as Malay, but labelling it as Singaporean. But also, um, I think the editor of this book did emphasise the fact that there needed to be a Malay-centricness to the collection and that it's about the whole identity and the whole experience of being Malay, not necessarily uh, being entirely Singaporean, but a focus on what it means to be Malay. And I think that's really great because I think for me, um, in terms of language, I feel a lot more closer to Bahasa because my family speaks in Bahasa and Chinese was just a language that I learned in school, uh, so it felt a lot more formal for me. Uh, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, I think it was very interesting to see the reviews of other readers um, that was floating around Bookstagram. I think a lot of readers who are Chinese uh, struggled with understanding the Bahasa. Uh, like references in the book or the religious references as well so I thought it was very interesting to see that flip in the readership experience and I would love to see more books like this that sort of do that you know that um you know sort of question the norm but not just for the sake of questioning the norm but actually to kind of establish um a wider range of what it means to be singaporean or what it means to be a, a kind of uh 
ethnic or cultural identity in Singapore. So next I have um, three books that were sent to me by Books Actually, which is another independent publishing house in Singapore. I mean, their publishing house is called Math Paper Press, but the bookstore is called Books Actually. And um, they kind of sent me this in a package. So it had a lot of other goodies as well, and a lot of cat-related uh, like merch, which was really cute. Um, but this is sort of their in-house publishing series. Um, they tend to publish a lot of local authors in very sort of similar aesthetic styles of like covers and all, which I really enjoy. I feel like books actually always has their aesthetics on point. First one is Cafe by Joel Tan. So this is a play um, and I think it's pretty interesting so far. It sort of is a bit more of a mundane uh, everyday, sort of a bit absurdist sort of slant to the play, which is really interesting. Um, very, very uh, modern, very sort of contemporary style. Um, this is Lousy Love Poems by Clara Chow. Um, uh, so this was supposed to be a, a challenge by her to translate um, her own poetry into Chinese or like to write a whole bunch of Chinese poems with English on the other side. So you can see here one side is Chinese and one side is English and you know reading all these books uh, with this book I realized I was like toggling between English, Chinese and Malay um, a lot. Actually I would have loved if there was an entire Malay story in this collection but that's fine as well. Yeah, and the last one is Translations to the Tanglish by Joshua Ip. Once again, it's about sort of, you know, playing with the idea of language and also Chinese. Uh, so it's about taking Tang Dynasty poems, I think, and trying to sort of translate that into more modern retellings uh, that are in English. So that is pretty interesting. Uh, I have never really read Chinese poetry, so this is a huge challenge for me. Uh, but it is pretty interesting, uh, since it might be a good challenge for those who have been reading a lot of Singaporean poetry, but you want to up your level, I guess, uh, if, you're re if you read Chinese. And the last book I have in the category of Singapore is Lion City, Singapore and the Invention of Modern Asia by Jivan Vasaka. So this was sent to me by Definitely Books, uh, which is, I think, a wholesale no like a books i don't definitely seems to be written for a general audience not just singaporeans but anyone really and um so far i quite enjoy the objectivity or no not objectivity i mean i quite enjoy the perspective of the author because the author doesn't seem to be completely on the side of Singapore exceptionalism but also not entirely critical of Singapore um, and sort of trying to occupy an in-between space allowing the reader to form their own opinions about Singapore but of course this is very very general I do think that this is a book that is really meant for people who have never read about Singapore before so if you're an international viewer and you've always wanted to learn about Singapore I would recommend picking this book up over some of the other books you might see around, floating around about Singapore because so many international books um, published about Singapore tend to paint Singapore in an overly positive light, in an overly sort of um, praiseworthy light, uh, which I don't think is great for any country. I think any country requires sort of a mix of good and bad and in-betweens and a lot of liminal spaces to consider. So, so far, I think this is all right. Um, yeah, but it is sort of a very classic history slash sociology kind of non-fiction, general non-fiction. So, yes. That was the category of Singapore. Now I'm going to move on to the environment slash climate related books. And this is the biggest category so far, I think. The first book I want to talk about is The Hunter's Walk by, my, by Nabil Ismir. So this was sent to me by the author himself, which is great. So the author, I, um, he works in the solar energy industry in a day, but um, has written this novel in his um, downtime, in his free time, uh, wanting to really tell stories um, that talk about climate change, but also about racism. So I think that was really, really interesting. He reached out to me asking me if I was interested in reading this. I haven't been able to read it, unfortunately, um, but I think the premise is super interesting. Um, it's sort of set in a prehistoric past where there is rampant colorism and uh, racism, I guess to that degree, and um, it's also talking about sort of rapid environmental change um, and how the entire tribe um, sort of handles that, like 
in an intersectional way. So that seems really cool and so far I've seen another review of the book and it seems like um, kind of like a YA fantasy genre. So that is going to be very interesting. I think it'll be very good to read um, when I sort of need much more of a story. Um, and I'm very curious to see how sort of the author wants to tackle both racism and climate change in a very different setting um, because a lot of cli-fi tends to project very far in the future but this seems to be set in a very long time ago past um, so that is a very interesting choice of a setting I would say the next three I have here are kind of library books and um, I just picked this up on kind of yesterday <laughs> um, the first one uh, which I am sort of almost finished reading is Ideas to Postpone the End of the World by Alton Krenak. And um, this is, I think, written by an indigenous activist and leader from Brazil. Um, and it's a very short book. It's kind of taken like snippets of, I think, a lecture or notes or essays by this person, uh, by this activist. And it's really, really cool, I think. Um, I've kind of mentioned briefly before about wanting to read more indigenous people's stories um, and I do think that indigenous people's way of life is what we really need <laughs> moving forward in terms of restoring our relationship to the land and of also sort of learning how to live sustainably uh, with the land and with one another so I am really trying to find a lot more indigenous perspectives um, this is from Brazil so that's really cool I think a lot of the books out there is really centered around say like the Native American kind of perspective uh, and I would love to see more of an Asian perspective um, maybe they're not published in English that's why I can't find them but um, if anyone knows about indigenous books or perspectives from Asia just let me know. The next book I have here is Losing Eden Why Our Minds Need the Wild by... Uh, wait, her name is covered <laughs> by Lucy Jones I think it's going to be a very interesting book because it is a bit more scientific or research backed, um, sort of persuading people why it is important or intrinsic for us to have wild around us um, and that it's not natural to be surrounded by such artificial environments. I think that's really really cool and one big reason why I wanted to read this book is really because a lot of people don't seem to really care whether there's wild spaces around them um, or because you know maybe the wild spaces are sort of uh, secondary to them and that other things are a lot more important but if you make the argument that it's almost crucial or essential for your well-being um, then that's something that you know concerns everyone right I think this would be a very interesting book to read especially if you're interested in the intersection I think of like psychology or um, science and wild the wild nature so much more of a human perspective but I think still interesting to read especially if you want to argue for wildlife preservation from a humanity point of view that might be your thing next I have this book called second nature scenes from a world remade by Nathaniel Rich. So I have heard of this author's name before, I'm pretty sure a lot of you have. Um, I think he wrote many other environmental books such as Losing Earth, A Recent History. Um, and that's, you know, I've been wanting to read that but somehow I haven't really picked up that book in comparison to other books. But I saw this in the library and this is I think his latest book um, and some people have mentioned that it's quite similar to Elizabeth Colbert's um, recent book Under a White Sky about sort of the very kind of almost extreme ways that humanity is trying to save the environment sort of you know in a very alien sort of unthinkable way um, and I'm very curious about that because I think Elizabeth Colbert she still writes um, about all these things in a very journalistic and very scientific way and I wanted to see whether you know you can bring that idea further and apparently this book is kind of the same train of thought, uh, same train of inquiry as that book, so I'm very interested to read that. And look at that cover, it's so eerie, like, it's so, uh, look at that glow-in-the-dark rabbit. <laughs> okay, next I have a couple of ebooks that I borrowed from the library, and the first one is called Seed Keeper by Diane Wilson. I think this is sort of speculative fiction, cli-fi, um, that's about intergenerational preservation of 
nature. So it's a novel that spans several generations following a Dakota family's struggle to preserve their way of life. It's about a protagonist I think who was estranged from the land and coming back to the family and the community and the land to sort of reawaken um, their sense of belonging. Uh, so I think that's going to be very interesting to read. Hopefully I'll get to be able to read the book in its entirety. Um, there's just so many books here that I want to read. And the next book I have is The Hungry Tide by Amitav Ghosh. Um, I did mention this book in my earlier book on the Climathon Readathon announcement, so no surprise there, but um, very interested to read because this is published in 2004 and you know Amitav Ghosh actually did talk about this novel a few times in his book The Great Derangement so I'll be really interested to read um, and also know that you know I haven't really read any sort of books that are based in South Asia as much so that would be something that I would love to kind of improve on um, reading more authors and more stories that are set in the Asian context, um, but they are not written necessarily by um, American authors or you know UK authors. I would really want to read books that are by the the Asian <laughs> Asians themselves, but uh, I'm only limited to English for now, uh, so we'll see about that. Okay, before I move on to the general nonfiction, I have one fiction book here, and that's Human X by Han Kang. Uh, so I did read her other book, The Vegetarian, I think, uh, and I don't know whether I would say I enjoyed it, uh, but it definitely made me want to read more <laughs> of her works. So here is Human X, and I know it is about um, the Gwangju uprising, uh, and you know, it seems to be very, very emotional and intense and I feel like there will come a point in my life where I need that sort of intensity in my life so I am parking this book for that situation. <laughs> I don't know whether anyone has noticed this before because in Singapore we do speak and read primarily in English so we might not have that sort of translation effect as much but I would say because I can read a little bit of Korean or I can read a little bit of like Chinese or like other languages so it kind of feels very funny when it's translated into English and it doesn't it, it feels like there is a very different effect when it's translated into English so especially for Asian literature it sort of translate, translates into this very um, absurd um, very mundane yet very underlying intensity this underlying intensity that seems so like like it's gonna jump out at you I don't know whether that's the language or just the writing <laughs> but if you have thoughts about that just let me know <laughs> okay now we can finally move on to the general non-fiction and for the first book I have I Contain Multitudes the Microbes Within Us and the Grander View of Life by Ed Yong so I would say this would be very very similar to the Entangled Life sort of trajectory whereas this is much more internal um, you know I have a soft spot for sciencey books I, I really do um, it's really my my ode to the past where I used to bury my face in a lot of encyclopedias uh, but um, yeah I'm quite interested because you know I've been reading a lot about um, being ecological and think in a very ecological way so I've also been slowly making my way through Staying with the Trouble by Donna Haraway um, and that has been really amazing in terms of thinking about symbiotic relationships and about mutualistic partnerships um, which is really cool and all very fascinating because it pushes back against the idea of indi individualism and also that kind of ties in to very indigenous ways of thinking and living uh, which is seeing yourself as part of the bigger nature being part of a bigger ecosystem um, so I would love to kind of read this as with that approach or that mindset. Next, I have a book that was sent to me by the author herself that's called Affliction Growing Up with a Closeted Gay Dad uh, by Laura Hall. Um, I haven't been able to pick this up at all unfortunately I think my reading uh, preferences have really strayed away a lot from the initial queer and uh, feminist feminism related books. Um, I was reading a lot of that last year but I definitely am still interested in those themes. This book is something that I hope to be able to get my hands on fully in the times to come. Hi! <laughs> this is my cat. Oh sorry. Come come. So this is the next book here called The Ungrateful 
Ungrateful Refugee by Dina Nayari. So this seems pretty, I would say, relevant. Now, uh, I've been wanting to read more about the refugee experience. Um, I haven't really read much about that and haven't really thought about um, yeah, the different stories and perspectives that come from massive displacements of people from all around the world. We all know that there's just so many incidences of people having to really move across countries and borders um, out of no choice, not of their own volition, but really because they had to escape certain circumstances. So this is a book that I kind of picked up wanting to read about that. I feel like there's going to be so much more to read about um, refugees and of migration in the future. I think personally for me, migration is a topic that has become a lot more salient in my reading thus far and so if there's any stories or books that you want to recommend recommend about the migrant experience or the refugee experience feel free to drop them down below the last book i want to talk about is this book called azadi freedom fascism and fiction by arunhati roy so i know that uh, arunhati roy roy is like a very renowned writer from india if i'm not wrong um and she writes in english and this is actually her non-fiction i know she's a lot more known for her novels uh, but for me I've always seemed to pick out um, people's non-fiction uh, so this was actually I picked this up in uh, the bookstore very recently because I I don't know something about it really called to me and I've always wanted to read uh, one of her books as well and it's very very contemporary it's very like in the moment uh, about the coronavirus as well as sort of political situations in India. I I have read a bit about anthropology based in South Asia, but I haven't really read anything that's a bit more contemporary or sort of happening right now. Yes, that's the end of my book haul generally. There's just so many books. Um, I hope to be able to read most of them. I think definitely I'll try to read the library books because they do have a due date. So thank you so much for joining me in this video. I uh, hope you don't mind this video as a bookish video. I will still be producing videos overall in about all sorts of topics. I know a lot of you have been wanting to know more about degrowth and about all sorts of things relating to the videos on work, labour and ambition and degrowth and all that and uh, I'll try my best to script as many of those as I can uh, but of course uh, depending on how I can really finish the books that I want to read and sort of research more in order to give a much more thoughtful and much more um, I guess credible account of these themes and topics um, but otherwise I will still try to do more live streams because I think um, I kind of really enjoy building that space for conversation and sort of just talking about things and having people talk about things in the in the chat box as well so yeah that seems to be a really exciting development for my content and for my channel um reminder the climathon is still happening so if there's some of the books that i mentioned in this book haul that you really seem very intrigued by uh don't hesitate to pick them up if not uh there are also many other videos and resources you can check out um in terms of that whole kind of thought thing. Uh, so my previous video was about that as well. So if you're interested, go and pick that up as well. So that's it from me. Um, so I'm so glad to see everyone again uh, after two weeks of not uploading, one week of not uploading. Uh, it's really nice to do this format once again and to talk about books. Uh, I really miss reading very often. I haven't been able to pick up a book for more than an hour uh, in any given day nowadays, which is quite upsetting, but uh, hopefully I'll get back to reading more frequently again. So I hope you're having a good day. If not, I hope you're having a good night or evening. Uh, and I do hope you get a good night's rest tonight as well. And that tomorrow will be a better day. If not, a good day. Or if not, just a neutral day every day um, for the rest of the week, for the month, etc. So forth. So thank you once again for joining me in this video. And I'll see you. In the next one if not i might see you on twitch i don't know <laughs> so yes goodbye and see you